So welcome back YouTube. Um, I have been pretty busy and uh, I wanted to talk today about uh, pests and maybe just a different way to think about pests. How you can um, maybe go out and systematically remove your pests but why that's probably the exact opposite thing that you want to do. So uh, stick around and if you want to maybe change your opinion on what a pest is and its role in your garden then stick around. Sometimes we take action to solve a problem and we actually make it way worse. Okay, the sun is setting and I thought this would be a great time to do a quick video on pests because this is a critical time for pears. There's a pest called coddling moth and the coddling moth lays its eggs on the underside of leaves near fruit buds and I had massive coddling moth problems when I started. I didn't have an ecosystem developed yet and what I did is I'd actually plant my trees and as soon as they reach this stage go online and they'll tell you exactly what to do spray your tree with insecticide because it'll kill the coddling moth it lays little eggs on the underside of leaves and then they crawl up the leaf just as the bud forms for the um, or not the bud sorry as soon as the fruit sets for the flower so these are now flowering out and I would spray and kill all the coddling moths. The interesting thing was, is I would get nailed by coddling moths nonetheless. And the next year it was worse, and the year after it was worse. And then I came across this thing called permaculture, and integrated pest management. Okay, so what did I do? I actually stopped spraying completely. And I, the idea, I thought it was nuts. The idea was that I needed some coddling moths on my property because if I didn't have coddling moths on my property then I didn't have food for the stuff that eats coddling moths and I thought that's actually brilliant. It's brilliant and it's stupid and it's simple and I don't know if it works and I'm scared so I decided to try it. And for the last three years now, I have never sprayed my fruit trees or apple trees for coddling moth. I'll get a couple coddling moths in some apples, but for the most part, you know, it's 1% of the apples. And often it's the apples that are the weakest, the trees that are the weakest, and the apples that I probably wouldn't have eaten anyway because they were going to spoil. And it's really easy to find the coddling moth, you just have to look for a pinhole. But let's talk about what was happening between the old me and the new me and why I think the solution if you have pest issues is maybe actually to remove the human, not the pest. This is a funny video to talk about pests. Look at my gardens here. My dog has been chasing for this squirrel and she's dug up my whole gardens. Like, this is a baby pawpaw that's just barely living. She, I just came in here and fixed it, and she's out here again. She's digging and rummaging around, trying to find this squirrel. Oh my gosh. She's going to kill every single thing I put in here. What a <laughs> nut bag. Holy... All right, so don't remove your pests. I'll give my dog some extra hugs and kisses tonight. With Jesus, holy! Like, look at this. 
big and giant holes. Oh my God. I can tell you for certain that if I came and checked this, you can see little bugs in there. Are these good guys or bad guys? I don't know. I don't know. We got a predator hiding right in there. Look at that. So there's this fantastic ecosystem that's happening right on all of this stuff. And this is what nature does. Nature does balance and nature does ecosystems. Okay, so let's talk about old me. Old me would have sprayed neem oil on those plants. Um, cayenne, pepper, garlic, um, onion, mix, salt, like who knows what, right? Some Look up some organic spray for your, your pears or whatever to get rid of codling moths. Well, the problem is, is codling moths are food for birds, they're food for wasps, they're food for ladybirds, ladybugs. They're food for green lacewings, they're food for dragonflies, they're food for lots of stuff. So if I kill them all, then great, I killed them all. I have no predators because I have no food for the predators. So then what happens? The next generation hatches because I didn't, first off, I didn't kill them all. It's not possible. And second off, they probably laid eggs. So they're probably naturalized onto my land because I have... Um, because I have fruit trees. Sorry about the darkness here. It'll fix as I walk in the woods. So um, when I kill all the when I kill all the pests, I kill all the predator food. And the pests they have eggs in the soil, so now they start hatching. They're hatching now into an ecosystem that has no predators for them. So they go nuts. They have all the food they want. They have no predators to stop them getting in, and they're all into my apples now. They're all into my pears. So it's funny, when I used to spray for these things, um, it, even though it was neem oil, like it was an organic spray, um, it doesn't matter because I was ridding my ecosystem of the food for the predators that I want. And what I actually caused was a bigger problem because now I had the next generation come up and I had way more pests than I did even on the first thing. So now look at what I've done. I've created a systematic system of inputs. And the reason why is because when I removed those uh, pests, I told nature, I'm the predator, okay? The ladybugs, the green lacewings, all those things that are gonna eat those pests, they're not needed anymore because I'm the predator now. So when I tell nature to do, that I'm the predator now, I just signed up to that role for life until I take a hit and decide to break that cycle. And it's gonna be rough because you don't have your native predators there because you've gotten rid of them all. You've told them there's no food here for you. So they're all gone. So now I decide I wanna swap and I wanna leave some of the pests up to attract the pet predators that I need. Well, I'm gonna have a rough couple of seasons before they naturalize. So now let's talk about, and it was like that for me. It was a, a rough, maybe maybe only a year, a rough year, but it got so much better. So now let's talk about my reaction and what happens. Okay, so now I actually leave some of the pests up. And what I find is actually that the pests will attack um, the weakest gazelle in the flock. So they'll hammer the tomato plant that was the skinniest, scrawniest, little runtiest thing because it didn't develop the thick cellulose walls to protect it. Or it'll drill into the weakest pear or peach because, or pear or apple for the codling moth because um, it didn't develop a thick enough, hard enough skin to resist it as well. Or maybe that's an area in my ecosystem where I didn't have very many native ladybugs and they just didn't find them in time. The thing is, is I actually, it's okay to have a couple pests live, uh, replicate, and then lay eggs in your soil. Because if you leave them up, you're gonna have the same thing happen with the predators. So the ladybugs are gonna come in, they're gonna find that there's actually food for them here. The ladybugs will now naturalize on your land and they will actually start laying their own eggs and their own larvae 
will now start eating the pest larva the moment it hatches. So let's look at the difference between those two things. So now when the codling moth's larva comes out and hatches just at the right moment, I have maybe a couple days for my predators to come and nail it. Now I can either come spray them, but then I immediately, immediately and permanently create, maybe not permanently, but long lasting, create a system of inputs that I need to continue feeding into. But if I have naturalized ladybugs that are laying their eggs in here, naturalized green lacewings that are lay, laying their eggs in here, then the moment that little jerk spawns, and hatches and starts crawling towards the egg, bam, the ladybug's on them. The wasp is getting him. You know, a lot of people will spray their wasp nest down and take them down, but wasps are giant jerks to everybody, not just us. They're giant jerks to the whole entire animal kingdom. They will actually come in and eat a ton of those pests. So if you have a wasp nest up in an area that you don't really care about, consider leaving it up because they're fantastic apex predators in the insect chain. So now they hatch, they get gobbled up by some of these predators that are in there wandering around looking for something to eat, right? I don't know what half of these things are, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'll tell you anecdotally that the moment I stop spraying and I let this ecosystem live on my food, I'm probably filming a pest right now. <laughs> You guys would probably laugh at this, but it doesn't matter, right? Because that is something that it will either eat something or will be eaten by something. And as long as you have a balance, sure, you might have some coddling moss in your pears, but it'll be like 1% of your pears will have coddling moss in them. You might have plum curculios. Well, okay, let me, let me just say that there are some pests that there may not be a natural solution for because there's maybe not a natural insect that eats them because the world has gotten so small that we've introduced invasive pests like Japanese beetle is another example. There's nothing here that eats it. So there's some pests where you maybe, this doesn't apply like all things in permaculture. It depends. So maybe, you know, learn about your pests, but I do know that the coddling moth has insects that will eat it. See, what is this? I don't know, but it's something that's alive. And I'll probably, I'll just leave it alone. So I can tell you absolutely that since I've stopped caring about pests, my pest problems have gone down to almost zero. I'll get some squash vining borers and it's because they get um, right into the vine and then nothing will eat them. They're really the only pest that I have that's uncontrollable. I have some Japanese beetles, but for the most part, it's not too bad. They'll eat some leaves, but the trees will survive. But the coddling moth problem was massive. I used to spray with neem oil. I used to get rid of them all. Aphids, massive problem. I had them everywhere. But then I started leaving up, if I saw one plant with a million aphids on it, then that was my signal that that was probably the weak plant. And maybe I could leave that one up feed the ladybugs because the ladybugs love those and then I would maybe get to hopefully keep some ladybugs on my land and now I have ladybugs everywhere now aphids are a little different because they will clone it's not just about laying eggs but they'll clone but that's just kind of more food for the ladybugs so really my pest philosophy is very different than others and this is what my solution is my solution to a pest problem is actually just to go out and buy more herbs, wildflowers, and plant more herbs and wildflowers. Plant more things that will attract all types of pests and build an ecosystem. That is, I think, what the main goal of all of us should be, is to create a balance where there is an imbalance and we don't get from imbalance to balance by eradication we don't get there from seek and destroy we get there from promoting other things to also live there and hopefully they like to eat each other 
and that is kind of how you create a balance so I just plant more plants plant more herbs especially um, culinary herbs tend to be really really good um, predator insect habitat and pollinator attractors as well so that brings in two different types of insects they eat each other they cause a war they fight heads get ripped off and my pears get saved so it's just another way of thinking about um, sometimes when a human sees a problem we just think what is that I don't know what that is I want to get rid of it and we have this seek and destroy adversarial relationship with nature and I think it hurts us in the garden because nature grows food inside of ecosystems all of these plants um, they grew and evolved in complex ecosystems insect ecosystems and animal ecosystems and when we disrupt those with this human mentality of annihilation um, we really do ourselves a disservice because that's just not what nature does nature just builds diversity when there's a pest swelling when there's way too many pests nature says hey predators there's a bunch of food here for you and the predators come and the predators solve the problem and eventually you go from spike valley to a nice smooth sustained balance so maybe give that a thought in your next garden if you see a pest consider removing some to help sustain the balance you're in this big peak um, but don't remove it all keep some and try to get to an equal equilibrium population of that pest just a thought it worked for me and hopefully it'll work for you as well good night Rob see you next time